Welcome to the podcast, Lillaby Cochran. Oh my gosh. Woo. Thanks, Ethan. <laughs> yeah, I'm your host of the Coffee Sometimes podcast, Ethan. Yeah. I was gone for two, three weeks. It was a long time. It was, yeah, felt it was, like a long time. It wasn't, in one sense, it wasn't long enough. In another sense, it was too long, you know? Too long. Because I, you know, I love being here. I, oh, I see. If there was one thing about being gone, I was like, I kind of miss the podcast. Really? Yeah, I didn't think I'd miss it. Wow. Just to know that Ross and Riley were having so much fun without me, I was like. Did you hear that they mentioned Meredith's birth? No. It's They say it's graphic and want to add the E, the explicit E to oh the content. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> And they tell all, huh? Yeah, it was fascinating. I was I laughing know. and uncomfortable. <laughs> I guess they got that information from uh, Ross's wife, Rachel. Yeah, I was. That, yeah, Ross exposed that information. It's true. That's proprietary, Ross. <laughs> You'll be hearing from my uh, attorneys. Oh my god! Except we have the same attorney. So <laughs> he'll just talk to himself. That's uh, awesome. Welcome to your first ever podcast. Thank you. Any initial? Uh, feelings or nerves anything you want to get out of the way mm. Do you want to like miss say something yeah miss? let me just say a bunch of things that would get canceled really quick yeah <laughs> no it's weird hearing my own voice like this and mm-hmm. your voice like this i know and being this close to a microphone and yeah you gotta just headphones you just gotta get up on it like that <laughs> try it just get i don't really ever wear headphones in my life so this is a big change for me <laughs> even when you're listening to music I'm just like a... Speaker? I guess I do sometimes. I had AirPods for 0.5 seconds and then I lost them in the Orlando airport. <laughs> oh. I wasn't used to the having to keep up with them. They were charging. And then I got on the flight to go to Norway and I asked the nice Norwegian man who was the airport guy and he said it was too late. They already closed the gate. <laughs> I know. So someone definitely scored your AirPods? I hope so, honestly. Yeah, someone, maybe someone who really was having a rough day. Just, just stole my airport, AirPods. <laughs> claimed, claimed the lo- the now lost AirPods. Yeah. yeah, they apparently emailed the Orlando airport, but I was like, that means nothing. I will never yeah. get those We back. all know how the Orlando customer support lost and found email is. <laughs> it's bad. It's an abyss. Um, well, welcome to the Coffee Sometimes podcast. Thanks. Your uh, your fiance just let us in with the intro. Yeah. Right. Shout so, out Zion. Shout I out love Zion. you. <laughs> yeah, we love you, Z. We're crazy about you, man. But I love you more, obviously. It's di- there's different <laughs> kinds of love, and that's what we're gonna get into today. The five love languages. Oh my um, gosh. No. Love that. <laughs> Honestly, that'd probably be a good, uh, I bet someone does it, five love languages like at work or something. Yeah. Actually, recently, Sophia has been asking people, like, what's your work love language? And it's been really cool. What'd you say? I said acts of service and words of affirmation. That checks out. Yeah. That checks out. Yeah. Um, well, that, that actually kind of segues nicely into what we wanted to get into talking to. Yeah, today, take huh? us there. Yeah, let's just go ahead and toot toot. Let's <laughs> get on the talking train. Uh, we we we've had Lil B on the team at our 44 Milton Avenue Alpharetta Cafe for two and a half years. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Honestly, <laughs> maybe like 10 or 11 months after we opened, you came on. So you've been yeah. on for the the majority of the time that cafe has been open. I remember during my interview when you guys asked me how long I thought I would stay, I said one year and internally I said, why did I just say one whole year? You're like, I can't commit to a whole year. You and crazy? then, and then I heard you guys were doubting me. So I, I doubled down and I was like, I'm going to stay true to my word and stick around for a year. Well, you've more than doubled down. Yeah. So that was crazy. We, you are free to go whenever <laughs> you know you need to. Wow. But, I guess on the on the vice versa for anyone that doesn't know, you're gonna be running the the cafe yeah. when when Dunwoody opens. Yeah. So I we may have said so. it that Mikey's gonna be uh, in charge of the Dunwoody Cafe when it opens, and that leaves uh, leaves you to take care of business. Mm-hmm. So thank you in advance. Um, you're welcome in yeah, advance. Hey, yeah. Super awesome. Cheers to that. Huh? Cheers. <laughs> That was a good. That was, it a good was time. great. But so yeah, you've been on the team. You've been. You've seen 
multiple um, stages or multiple characters Mm -hmm. come in and in and out of the cafe. Yeah. Um, You know what? That's honestly something really cool to talk about too. Of Like what does it look like to be in um, leadership or like growing in leadership at a place with notoriously high turnover? Mm. Okay. As in, you know, we've talked about that before off camera, Mm -hmm. of course, but like... Always off camera. (laughs) I've never been on the camera for any of these. (laughs) Well, now we can say on camera and off camera after this conversation. Yes, yes. This is super exciting. Can't wait. Um, Yeah. If you have anything that you want to share of insights of like, this isn't your company. You don't own it, Mm -hmm. but you are working like you own it. Like you're taking more Mm -hmm. and more ownership and responsibility and pay hello um (laughs) but you're also seeing this divide happen between yourself and peers that may come in for a season Mm -hmm. and then they go do another thing Mm -hmm. quicker than you've long or sooner between the time that you're here yeah um how's that been it's been a lot of things it's been really hard sometimes mostly because valor I mean, you, we are a family. It's not a joke. I know sometimes people are like, I see your Instagram stories. Are you guys like acting like you love each other? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's part of the um, pay. Yeah, we're so, yeah, we get tips for this. No, we, we just love each other a lot. And it's really crazy. I think that there's been several things that have raised my confidence. I've had to personally decide why I'm doing what I'm doing over and over and over again. And a big part of working at Valor for me has been investing in Alpharetta, the city, not just serving coffee because I'm a coffee nerd. Mm -hmm. Secrets out. I am not a coffee nerd. I've learned so much about it and I do love coffee. And, you know, to my own demise, I have great opinions about coffee now when I travel and Uh, try new spots. For better, for worse, man. (laughs) But it's nice yeah. when you find the for better. Yeah, you know, when it's you're, so nice. When your knowledge leads you to yeah. a good spot. And you can appreciate something more. Quality in general, yeah, it's it's really fun to know quality versus just like the average. But when it comes to turnover and all of my friends that feel like family leaving, it doesn't matter who it's been. I mean, like everybody you connect with on different levels. And ultimately, like we don't all – every human doesn't have relational capacity to just hold every single person in their inner circle for the rest of their life. Yeah. But I think it's just acknowledging that everybody's on their own journey and like no matter what you do in life, there's going to be some kind of turnover and like Mm -hmm. we're experienced humans just, we live and then we die. We live and then we change seasons. Take us there, dude. (laughs) Well, we live and then we get, in serious relationships and then sometimes those don't end up being you know forever and you get married or you get divorced you have kids Mm -hmm. we're all in different seasons and it changes our lives forever so I think in and out of valor I'm just experiencing in my young 20s that everyone's on a different path in general and I have to acknowledge that everybody's just like chasing their own version of success and happiness you know yeah and let alone this time that we're in For a lot of people that come and work at Valor, they're typically in like one of the most tumultuous seasons of their lives. Yes. I deeply resonate. (laughs) (laughs) Whether that... At least that's how I came in. Oh, yeah. I mean, no shade to anybody. We've had people come in out of breakups or moving in. We've had multiple people. This is their job when they moved out of state, Mm -hmm. you know? COVID hires in general. Yeah. Post-grad. Yeah. Like they don't want to move on to like getting their business corporate job yet. Yes. So they're like, maybe I'll do something fun. Yeah, we'll do something fun. Yeah. And then you like stick out pre YouTube celebrity and Sam Thomas, yeah. you know? Oh my gosh. Shout out. Yeah. So we've had a lot of characters like who basically, you know, they're not going to stay forever, but like yeah. we're catching them in such a vulnerable, but potent time in their lives. Yeah. Um, there's That's like a true. certain like beauty to that. Right. Mm-hmm. That in this time of transition, knowing that we can have and like as leaders facilitate a safe space for growth, Mm -hmm. for introspection, for healing, for like challenge, like a constant gentle pressure Mm kind of thing. Yeah. um, And help them grow and see how that, 
benefits their next step. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain level of selflessness that kind of has to come with that. And that's something I've learned Mm -hmm. is I had control issues in the beginning. I think I've talked about that off camera and on camera now of like (laughs) when, you know, you hear murmurs of like, oh, I think so-and-so is like going to be Good word. Murmur. Nobody says murmur. That's awesome. Yeah, people murmur, man. There's murmurs. (laughs) (laughs) When the murmurers, one who murmurs. (laughs) Yeah. uh, That's awesome. When there's, you know, murmurs of like, oh, this person's going to be moving on, like the, you're, you can feel your hands yeah, like you clenching. Yeah, you knuckles. You're like, totally. no, 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 no. Control. Like, I like, I like how everything is, but there's like a certain level of uncontrollable fluidity to our work environment. Mm-hmm. And 100%. that's crazy. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sure even now you're stepping into leadership in a newer way, but even just being someone on the team as like more of a rock in the team for the last two and a half years. I'm sure you've just felt that a lot, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so kudos to, to staying strong. Wow. I remember, do you remember the conversation that it was just a Saturday? I think we were opening and I don't know why it stuck with I me. I missed that. Oh, oh, I know. I we used to be good avocados. Yeah. And vegan cream cheese. Shout out to my wife. She knows Sauerkraut. how to pick good avocados. <laughs> She does. Also, for all you haters out there, put sauerkraut on your avocado toast. It's good. It's good. It's good. You changed. I feel like a lot of people don't do that. Changed me. It's she true. doesn't do the sauerkraut. Really? She, Ever? She just did like she would just do her English muffin with the avocado, and I was like, "Hey, what if we put cream cheese below it?" She's yeah. like, "No," and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna do it." Yeah. And then she's like, "All right, this is better." But uh, yeah, I, I like to put a lot of well, because that's one of the only things I eat for breakfast. So you kind of figure out how to juice it, juice, juice it up. Yeah. Make it glam. Anyways, one Saturday we were working and um, I remember just like a guy who like owned a bunch of restaurants, maybe like Virginia. He made this comment to you. He's like, I could use 27 of you <laughs> over at my yeah, restaurant. Yeah, I do remember that guy. Yeah. And um, I'm also bringing up a topic that we didn't really talk about at all. But I think about like the people that listen to this are often – Coffee shop owners or business owners? Hello, coffee shop owners and business owners. Hi. (laughs) Nice to meet you. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, a lot of our wholesale partners listen to this. A lot of like just people that own businesses, Mm -hmm. um, which is super grateful for that. And friends. Friends, family, loved ones. Yelp reviewers. Right, right. (laughs) The reason I was bringing this up was like I think a lot of times in businesses – there, the question is like, oh, I just can't find good people. Mm-hmm. Or, and we, we kind of had like a whole little series on this maybe a couple of weeks ago before I was gone. But what do you think it is about Valor that attracts good people mm-hmm. like yourself? Yeah. And what keeps them around? Mm-hmm. And you can answer that as personally as you want without being as like objective. Or you can be ob- as objective as yeah. you want. Yeah, honestly, with Valor, I don't really know how to be objective because it's been such a deep part of my life for two and a half years. Mm-hmm. I well, even before that, though, honestly, I mm-hmm. I came, and it's funny because I thought being a regular at a coffee shop was Me if too. you went to a coffee shop, you went to, in my case, Valor when I was home because I was in and out of California. And whenever I would come home, I would go to Valor. So I thought I was a regular. Yep. But now I work at a coffee shop and I'm like, oh, regular means, you know, three plus times a week. At least. Yeah, at least. I mean, there's people that come in multiple times a day. Yeah. Yeah, which that's awesome. But yeah, when I thought I was a regular at Valor and I was coming in once every like six months. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, but I was coming in at crucial, a well, crucial you were, time. And you were known every time you came. Yeah. And so that probably adds yeah. to it. When we, we, I connected with you and Ross and Riley right when I came back from traveling overseas and doing mission work for mm-hmm. nine months. So, I mean, I was in a super raw place. I went back to Alpharetta, Georgia, like that. It's no secret that we're... Alpharetta is not inherently suffering financially. Sure. It's doing the opposite. I mean, it's becoming more and more bougie every yeah. day. <laughs> bougie by the day. Speakeasies. Yeah. Boogetopia. <laughs> boutiques. Bars, boutiques. Yeah. Uh, another B. Barns. But there's lots of barns. It's true. It's more of a Milton thing. But yeah. 
baguettes. Baguettes. <laughs> yeah. But I went in and I was touched by you guys. I don't know. It was just, it was easy to connect with you guys and to see young guys who were, I mean, you guys were just fun and you owned a business and you had just gotten married, all of you, and you guys were just stoked on life. Like, sure. Stoked about coffee, stoked about love each coffee. other. Y'all were we goofy. We love each other. I could tell y'all were friends. That was huge for me. Yeah. And then you wanted to be friends with me and the people that I happened to be with every time I'd go. Mm-hmm. And you would remember things. That was huge for me because I'd go back in and... I mean, in my eyes, I was a regular, but I wasn't regular enough for you guys to remember my name or anything. Right. And y'all are like, yo, Lillaby, how was the exact thing we talked about last time? And you guys remembered when I was coming home from Cali and stuff like that. So, yeah, that was super important for me and super fun. And so when I went, I remember, too, y'all used to do the tiny cookies. Oh, that? We yeah. need to bring those back, honestly. We can. We, we can do it. Okay. We can do anything we want. Yes. I love that. Dream big. <laughs> Okay, well then, can we do big cookies if we're dreaming big? Like, just like <laughs> face size cookies yeah. <laughs> for free. I love it. Well, you did tiny cookies with like, to my knowledge, it was scraps of dough, but you guys wanted to make into like celebratory cookies or hard day cookies or like you just need a cookie kind of day. <laughs> sure. And so when I would come to and from California, you guys would be like, you earned a cookie. <laughs> and I was just like, who are these people? This is so awesome. And I felt like your friends very, Mm -hmm. it just was one of those things. And for me, I mean, all of my life decisions have to do with prayer. That's like a huge part of my, how I make any decision, honestly, anything large enough to think beyond like, what should I wear today? I'm probably praying about it, you know? And so I remember I was in California and this is pre pandemic. This is totally different life phase. And I, I, I thought, like, if I ever moved back to Georgia, I would really love to work at Valor. And I had no coffee experience. And I liked matcha more than coffee. But I would get a little iced iced vanilla latte, something like that. (laughs) Classic. (laughs) Yeah. Timeless. Respect to all the iced vanilla latte. We see you. Queens and kings. We just happen to just have lavender vanilla. It's true. It tastes awesome. Yeah. Except for the one guy that thinks it tastes like soap. <laughs> Dude, talk about being undefendable. We got to get yeah, there later. That's true. But um, long, short story longer is what I should be saying <laughs> is that I prayed about it. I was thinking about it. I came back home. And what I think brings awesome people to Valor is just like feeling like a friend. The little things matter. Those like first timer stickers. I love bringing my friends oh, that were from out of sure. state because I had friends from all over because I was traveling internationally and to and from California and they would come and visit me in Georgia and I'd be like, do you want to get a sticker as an adult? It's not like <laughs> your 12 or like your six to 12 year old checkup. You're just you like just an adult dentist. getting a sticker. <laughs> you got the no cavity yeah. sticker. And it's just for going to a coffee shop, like sure. sickest thing ever. My friends loved it. And I don't know, people just liked it and I feel like I mean I'm sure other people have different experiences with Valor but I'm just so um convinced that I feel like a lot of people feel the same way I did it's just shocking it's like how are these people so nice and Mm -hmm. remember my name and feel like my legitimate friends and like it's just an attractive place it's bright it's happy even on a rainy day I would go to Valor and be like this is such a beautiful space then I was in a crazy life situation where COVID hit, I moved back to Georgia. A lot of things were changing for me. And I applied um, on a day that I said no to the ministry I was working for. Mm -hmm. And I just felt so much peace and I was so stoked. And then I went into the interview and Ross is wearing like a shirt or a tie with Gigi's face swirled all around (laughs) it. Do you remember that? Oh, I know the shirt. Bring it back. Honestly, it was awesome. Ross, if you're listening, wear the shirt again. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, he's got, it's like a tie-dye shirt with Gigi's face all over it. And it's just like looping around over and over and over again. And I was like, if anything, I just want to be homies with these people. Like, they're awesome. A dad that wears his child's face on a t-shirt tie-dye like who are you guys hey if anybody's <laughs> thinking of gift ideas for me now that i'm a dad yeah merry christmas to ethan bring it you get like five delivered to your house that'd be awesome get one for each work day you yeah. know? I'm, I'm set <laughs> that'd be awesome but yeah i just feel like there's a weird magnetism when and you know i feel like for a lot of people it feels spiritual but i think there's just a very literal thing you just attract 
what you are. If you're light and happy and you're cultivating a beautiful, generous environment, then mm. you're going to attract generous, light, happy people that want to dig deeper into that. Whether it be a coffee shop or, I mean, relationships or a school or sororities, let alone like businesses and mm -hmm. I don't know. It just seems simple. It's like one plus one equals two. You're just sure. gonna. Totally. I knew that. If you're <laughs> if you're one thing, then people want to. I think everybody wants to feel at home somewhere. Yeah. So people that were wanting the things that you want, you Ross and Riley want in your business, then they're going to want to feel at home with Valor because they feel understood there. Mm -hmm. You know. That's a good lesson, man. You are. You attract what you are. Yeah. Right. So, um, one of the, one of the things we were doing a while ago is we were walking through like our interview questions and cool. on air, we oh were asking gosh, ourselves awesome. the interview questions and a couple of them are like, describe your ideal coworker and Whoa. describe your ideal leader. Mm. And what Ross was saying was like, these questions aren't about what you actually want out of these. It's just who you are as a worker mm. and who you want to be as a leader. That's awesome. You know? And so we kind of perpetuate that, those behaviors when, with what we want out of some, someone else. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, if you are a business owner and you want awesome people, you got to look in the mirror, right? Mm -hmm. And be like, what do I want? What do I want out of these people? And that, that then answers the question of what do I want to see out of myself yeah. in my life? Yeah, that reminds me of two people. David Basilia and Mother Teresa. <laughs> Two I mean, legends. What a pair. One living, one not. One's <laughs> been on the podcast. One, one has been mentioned on the yeah, podcast. As of right now. Yes. But Mother Teresa was huge. And I just didn't know this until I started reading her speeches and being inspired by people that made books out of her letters and anything that she shared and even just stories like eyewitness accounts. There's books you can go on Amazon and find these books, guys. Or thrift books, wherever. It's very true. I like that you just mentioned that. Okay, yeah. I'm thrift. I'm a thrift books guy. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's it's cheaper, and you're making the world go round. That's you know? right. Yeah. Reduce, reuse, yeah. recycle. Recycle. Thrift books. So Mother Teresa, she, I just, I guess, especially when I was reading this for the first time, I think I was about 19, and I... I think I just thought that someone like Mother Teresa, I didn't think of her entire life story. I mm -hmm. thought of who I was taught she was by the end of her life, you mm -hmm. know? And she, so when she's sharing about her conviction, she's talking about like basically telling people what to do because people are asking her questions all the time because she's like wise and giving Towards her life away. Towards the end of her life? Towards the end of her okay. life. That's, thanks for asking. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so in Calcutta, she, this is where people are asking her these questions. She's built a life around the slums of India and like seeing extreme change. It's beautiful. But people are asking like, okay, should I serve here? Should I serve there? Where's the greatest need? And her answer, no matter where you were from, which was shocking to me at the time, was the greatest need will be your family. And then once you think that your family is tended to, it's your neighborhood. And then after your neighborhood, what's your city? What's going on in your city? Mm. And then think overseas. Like you, you don't just jump to Calcutta unless, I mean, I don't want to tell everyone to do it, what to do with their life because sometimes... I believe people have crazy calls where they're just getting these dreams or, you know, ever since they were a kid, they've wanted to go to Belgium or something. Uh, you know? Brussels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take me there. Yeah, but really, I feel like there's some like inherent callings on very special people's life. But totally. for most of us, like, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing with what you have before you, you mm -hmm. know? And like that idea... And then the David Bazilia thing was he was on the podcast and he mentioned there's all these people coming to him asking, should I start this business or that business and asking for just advice? You know, who wouldn't want advice from David? <laughs> I want advice from David. I do too. But anyways, he just says his word of advice is like, we have enough businesses going around. If you want to make a coffee shop, are you first serving coffee out of your home for your neighbors and friends? Mm -hmm. If you want to be the next great chef, are you cooking meals that are like worthy of your dream restaurant right. in your own home for your family and friends and yeah. community? And 
the idea of like attracting, you know, in our instance, valor, like attracting amazing people. It's because people are modeling things in their own very personal life. Yeah, before, already, are you already hosting yeah, people over for dinner? Totally. And even down to, I mean, no one's perfect, but what kind of friend are you? For mm-hmm. me, what kind of daughter am I or sister? For you, husband and now father, you know? If you're just like <laughs> losing your crap on everyone all the time, you're not patient, you're not kind, you're not listening, you're not empathetic in all of the tiny ways that no one sees, you know, before you're through the doors at Valor for us, mm-hmm. then it's going to leak out into your work life. You can't hide that for long that you're an impatient, unkind, unapathetic, I should say, person, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's grace and no one needs to be perfect, but I just think we attract awesome people because there's this really cool thing about Valor that you guys modeled first. You just want everyone to actually be healthy humans before they're healthy workers, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's totally. huge for me. Yeah. 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 And even the like taking it further of maybe you're a healthy human and you have this vision of wanting to have a restaurant or a coffee shop, but you hate hosting. Yeah. It's like, well, that's kind of all you do. Yeah. Is like have people come mess up your space. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. For lack of a better term. Yeah. And we like put it back together. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, no, that's a good word. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mother Teresa. Yeah. And thank you, Lil B. Whoa. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. So say we have all these healthy, awesome humans in the space. Mm-hmm. Um, now we're... Sounds awesome. Yeah. I want to be what, there. What could go wrong? Yeah. Woo-hoo. We got a bunch of humans <laughs> in a space. We're a team. And the thing about Valor is we're pretty high volume, right? So it's not just you take the orders, I make the drinks. Mm -hmm. And then halfway through the day, I take the orders and you make the drinks. But there's like this person and then this person has the support. And then there's the person that steams the milk, person Mm -hmm. that makes the drip, person that does the dishes. Yeah, and everyone's busting it. Yeah, it's like a symbiotic system. Oh, yeah. Right. Love that. Um, (laughs) Well, before I get too far into that, maybe we could talk about what have you seen in your your time of like different um, hmm, personality types fitting mm-hmm. into valor? Mm-hmm. Um, because our like hiring philosophy for a long time was just like, let's hire crazy people <laughs> like yourself. And That's awesome. Like me and like Mikey. And Jonathan. And Jonathan. Shout out. Um, let's get all these like huge personalities in a room Mm -hmm. and just like go crazy. Um, but I think it was actually when we hired, um, Colby. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We love you, Colby. We love you, Colby. (laughs) Um, we were like, she was more, she was very confident, very, um, disarming, Mm -hmm. very, uh, I'm just smiling, thinking about her. Gentle. Yes. Uh, angel. Yeah. We always call, we call her shop angel. Mm, and she's maternal. Maternal. Yeah, but she's your friend. Don't be offended by that, Colby. Yeah. You're not just a mom. But You're she had friend. this like caring, come under my wing kind of aura. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Very bright. But that maybe didn't fit the exact script that we thought we were looking for in the beginning, mm-hmm. right? But then it made the team and everybody better. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Um, it's funny to hear that too because I wasn't hired yet. Right. I mean, I worked with Colby, but I wasn't in the process of you guys only hiring crazy people and then you being like, we're going to make an exception for this awesome person and see how it turns out, you know? Yeah, because there are sometimes awesome people that don't work out, Mm -hmm. right? And I've seen that before. Like my wife, I always give an example. It's like she probably wouldn't want to work at Valor five days a week. Mm -hmm. might be a little draining for her. Sure. We do have a lot of introverts on the staff regardless. Um, Do we? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> well, I say that. I'm thinking of Gavin. One. Yeah. <laughs> Other ones. Yeah, there has to be another one. <laughs> Siwoo right now. <laughs> yeah, and but, they're amazing. But there's, uh, I don't know, I I guess all I'm just getting to is like, I've come to realize that there's sort of like a, these, these puzzle pieces of putting together like a healthy team, yeah. you know, and that there's not just like one archetype that makes for an awesome employee. Isn't that right? so sick too? And that's, that's why I love the life's like that. Yeah. And, I and, that. and I think what we talk about in our, maybe it's our leadership training or just our orientation is that 
there's like a real make or break moment there though mm. with when you have people that have really different countenances and temperaments is that you can either view those people as like challenges to who you are yeah, or you could see them as like the superpower to your weakness yes. and you come together and yeah. create this. Yes. You're bonded. You're bonded. And you're not hitting fingertips. Yeah. Like if our weaknesses are in between our fingers and we're two hands coming together, there is a chance that your fingertips, your strongest points are just hitting and clashing. You're going to break yeah. someone's fingers. A little conflict. But then when you come together and you lace fingers, your your strengths are covering someone's weaknesses. So what do you think keeps it here? Like fingertip on fingertip? And yeah. what 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 causes that shift to go into each other? Yeah, for me it's appreciation. I think like learning how to just see someone as beautiful. Whether they be a guy or a girl, this isn't about physical, you know, but everyone that flowers is gorgeous. Yeah. (laughs) But like inner beauty, you, you see their strengths and yeah, again, that for me has a lot to do with prayer, Mm -hmm. but for anyone, you can start asking yourself, what is beautiful about this person? What is praiseworthy about this person? What's a like something that I don't have that they're really good at? And I think something I learned in high school actually, and this was just like me trying to figure out why I was actually leading a Bible study and it, there's scripture on Jesus calling himself your friend. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, this like savior in the Christian context is something that human beings can call their friend. And mm-hmm. at that age, I was like, how can Jesus be my friend? Then I started thinking about if he's my friend, what causes me to not be his friend? And then I started thinking about my friendships in general. And being a young woman, I can specifically speak about like envy coming in and destroying anything good. Oh, yeah. Especially when you're younger and you're figuring out who you are. So you're just naturally more insecure. You're not mm-hmm. secure in Lillaby or whoever you may be. And even even at our age, right? Yeah, Early that's 20s, true. we're... You're changing, you're shifting, you're comparing your life season to other people. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that just doesn't stop. Like someone retires earlier than you or your marriage didn't last as long as the other or your kids don't have the same. I mean, I'm sure that it's just an an endless cycle of comparison. As long as we live, you can compare yourself to at least your neighbor. You know, Comparison is (laughs) the thief of joy, right? It is. It totally is. So what I'm getting at was I had this mental idea that has stuck with me for a long time. No, I just had an itchy ear. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you were telling me to put my face closer to the mic. Hey, you can I'm always like, put I your face closer to the mic, close. too. You're doing great. You're doing great. I thought that was a secret code. I'm no, sorry. No. <laughs> it's just when you're talking, the camera's on you. So I was like, ah, oh, it's a good opportunity for me to scratch my ear. <laughs> oh, I wish it was on but, you for that. But hey, secret out. All right, I scratched my ear. His ear. Yeah. Okay, back to my profound revelation before you're itching your ear. Um, yeah, I just, I was thinking about like, why would my friendships break? And I feel like this really has to do with now and valor and like seeing someone as awesome instead of a threat, you mm-hmm. know? was the idea of a boomerang. Like, so I had this thought, like, dang, I'm realizing in conversations that, so we're talking right now. You are in this different season of life. You're the owner of the business. I'm just, you know, the grunt woman. (laughs) One of the many. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just, I'm just pit crew, you know? And Mm. that's just a silly example, but I'm in a different season. I'm not married yet. I don't have a kid yet. You can always compare yourself to somebody, but you are married. You do have a kid and you do own a business, blah, blah, blah. So I'm talking to you and instead of me only listening to you and looking at you, hearing you, I, there's this boomerang effect going on. So it's like, I'm throwing you like my attention, but it comes back to me in my own mind. And mm. I'm comparing myself to you, whether I'm like, at least I'm cooler than him, blah, blah, blah. Right, or I'm thinking cooler, like, busted. Happy. <laughs> thanks. No, but the point is I could also be comparing myself, not in a prideful sense, but in an insecure sense. Mm. But either way, it's pride because it's all coming back to me. So I'm either, it's just not, I'm listening to someone, but am I? Like I'm really in my own mind thinking about myself, concerned with Lillaby. And I'm missing out on Ethan, you know, or sure. fill in the blank with anyone. And I realized that in my friendships, I needed to stop 
like this boomerang thing from happening. Mm -hmm. I needed to pay attention to others, like look at someone when they're speaking, listen to someone when they're speaking and don't listen to respond because when you're just listening to respond, you're actually having an internal dialogue the entire time in your own mind. You're not listening, you know? Mm -hmm. So you're just waiting for your turn to talk. Yes. Busted. Yeah. Busted. And that's guilty. (laughs) And I've done it too. Totally. That's why it's still a conscious thing and it sounds silly, but I just ask myself like, is the boomerang in my hand or not? And right. that sounds so silly, but it's been huge for me. Right. Like I'll look at someone and I'm like, oh, I just need to be looking at them right now, listening to them right now, mm-hmm. because I'll have self-awareness that I was actually focused on myself. Mm-hmm. So I think in any team dynamic, and since we're talking about valor, valor, we have crazy people and they're awesome. Like mm-hmm. people that will like bust it down, break dance, get on the bar and take shots of espresso or if it's Jonathan's last day, shots of alcohol (laughs) i don't know what we were even drinking anything goes yeah so i mean there's just crazy people and then there's people that are kind and intentional and they're going to be quieter but they're going to get everyone in the cafe water by hand elijah Mm. you know Mm -hmm. or like ariel was so good at connecting with very unlikely people i Mm -hmm. felt like and she'd be having sick conversations and become friends with them like they'd be around her table for dinner because she she was being Ariel. And like, if everyone is themselves, then we're doing something awesome. But if we're all, in my language, have the boomerang and we're just comparing ourselves, we're a lesser version of ourselves and they're a lesser version because no one thrives when some, even one unit of the team is envious or pessimistic or down, you know? Totally. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, man. And that's a, it's an interesting dynamic to get everybody under one roof train yeah. everybody in a similar way, push similar, push the same mm-hmm. values and service philosophies and ideas, but then kind of have to caveat it with like, but you have to like live this out yourself. Like how does, how does Lillaby live out the core values of valor? Mm, totally. How does Mikey live out the core values of valor? And it's going to look a little different. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. We put I'll, our own flavor on things. Right. You know? And we try to, I think, we try to do a good job of just like letting everybody fly. Yeah. And it's kind of like a ask for forgiveness, not permission thing yeah. when it comes to making calls. Yeah. Even like giving people free drinks and yeah. things like that. Uh oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh <that's, hey. laughs> yeah. I now, don't know. You give us permission to give like one free drink a day under sure. our own discretion. But then yeah. there's days when I'm like, there's been like two regulars that are having a hard day and the milkman's coming in and I right. want to give Devontre a free drink, sure. the milkman shout out. <laughs> and you got to do what you got to do. I also want to, yeah, exactly. And so you're just, yeah, that's a tiny example of taking, what's the word? Ownership, responsibility, yes. authority. That's great. Do you feel like you have authority at work? Yeah, I really do. And I think that that was because of trust. Immediate, inherit, I didn't have to earn it, trust, Mm. right? Like your trust was you telling me, you not only got the job, but you're a part of a team and we think you're awesome. And so you speaking life, all of you in your own way, speaking life over me and then the entire team immediately being like, Lillaby, as if I've been friends with them forever. That was, yeah. this crazy. Like that always happens. Every new hire, we're like, so when are you coming over for dinner? Like, we are new best yes. buddy. <laughs> and that's so cool. Honestly, yeah. that's the sickest thing about Valor. But yeah, I think there was an immediate trust I didn't have to earn. Mm-hmm. And so, and then you spoke life over me by saying, we hired you because you are... I don't know what you said, but I'm sure you just said things like Like awesome, cool. cool. Yeah. Swaggy. (laughs) Swaggy. So then I wanted to live up to that. I wanted to be awesome. I wanted to be cool and I wanted to be swaggy. Sure. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, That's calling it out before you even like see it done in the workplace is really, it's a bold move. And I don't, it's, it's bold, but it's brilliant. Like, sure. And I think it's pretty foolproof. Yeah. Like for the most part, if you're just speaking life. I'm sure there's studies on that. There are studies on it. Have you seen them? No. Okay. Uh, No one quote me on this because this is just me retaining something. Good thing our fact checkers on vacation. So (laughs) true. I got, um, I got really into this over 2020 actually. 
Hey. Yeah, it's about the power of words. Anyone can Google it right now. If you're driving, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> good, good call. <laughs> yeah, but it's on, there's a bunch of stuff even on just YouTube, but they have plants. Plants are a great example. I've seen like water and food and um, snowflakes also undergo this experiment, but I'll use plants as the as really we should do it honestly at Valor. It'd be a really cool like public experiment. Okay. But you're like, I haven't heard it yet. I'm not gonna approve of it yet. Yeah, I'll let me hear it first. Yeah, there's one in they're the exact same. So like it's the same plant, same soil, same pot, same plant experience. Sure. You know? So it should have the same outcome. They're getting the same amount of water, sunlight. They're equal in mm -hmm. every sense. The only difference is, and some people actually speak over the plants, but some people have a constant like audio recording that is exclusively going to one plant and another is going to the other. But one is speaking life. And it's literally just like, you're awesome plant. You're going to grow so strong. And it's really funny to hear. It's like, you're beautiful. <laughs> and it's like a plant, you know? Then the other one, especially if you're the one speaking <laughs> it, you just have to like yell at one plant and speak life over the other. But then the other one, you're like, you suck. You're never going to grow. You're never going to mount to anything. And you're not even like, pretty whatever it is it's crazy but they're talking to plants and every time the one that has had the exact same out like experience you know to us plants they're not like sure humans they don't need kind words but speaking life makes a plant thrive and speaking death kills a plant you should look it up. It's crazy. I will look it up, man. That's food, even food molding, you can speak life over one and you can speak death over the other. And inevitably over time, they both mold. But it's like black, gnarly mold on one. And again, I haven't done this myself. I've just seen it on YouTube. But I wonder what the life mold is like. Was that cool mold? Yeah. One was on Mythbusters, actually. What? But um, was it cool mold? It was It was more like just subtle little white molds. Like chill mold. Kind of cute in a way. Cute yeah. mold. Vibey mold. <laughs> Vibey. Done. Not like, oh, I'm never even. We got to throw away the whole Tupperware. Sure. You know? Sure. The other one. Was I thought like, you were going to go a different, like a kid direction. Because oh. I've heard moms have like a parenting style, oh. specifically with their children, where it's like, They'll say the encouragement before the action's done. Yeah. Like, you're doing such a good job cleaning up. You're such a good cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> and then they start cleaning up. Yeah, that's good. Versus, like, you need to clean up. Like, you need yeah. to do this. And usually won't perpetuate that behavior. Yeah. Um, so almost like calling it out before it's done. Yeah. And then you just want to be it because sure. who doesn't want to be beautiful? Or you know? a good cleaner. Or a great cleaner. Or yeah. the best cleaner. I think too in feedback in Valor, I don't think we've ever said this, but I feel like I've experienced and I try to deliver feedback in my own life, but especially at Valor with the love sandwich thing. Like, oh yeah. Build somebody up. And it's not a lie. You're not just filling, filling them up with air. But, like, tell them why they're awesome and remind mm -hmm. them why they're on the team and what you appreciate about them. Mm -hmm. And then say, there is something we really need to talk about, and it's this. And it could be a behavior that's going on that's affecting the team negatively. Sure. And a lot of that has to do, too, with their personal life. So you're really good at asking, like, are you okay right now? I've noticed this. I first want to ask, what's going on? Before yeah. I'm just you don't attack, you inquire in a peaceful and empathetic way. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, maybe they did hear some hard feedback, which sometimes it's basic behavior like timeliness or cleanliness, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's deeper and it's communication styles at large, or it's getting offended by customers all the time, or mm -hmm. just, I don't know, whatever it could be. But then at the end, you just remind them who they are again. And it's not redundant. It's not for the sake of just feeling like a good person who's delivering hard news. It's for the other person. Like, really, I want you to remember that you're amazing and you're an asset to this team and we want you to be healthy. And that's why we have this conversation. Yeah. And I learned recently in like premarital stuff, you were, you were there. It was um, Barry and Eileen. Me? Yeah, the oh, legends. Yeah. yeah, the European <laughs> legends. They Across said, the pond. Yeah, <laughs> they've been married forever, and now they just like encourage anyone that's married or yes. wants to be married. Yeah, I give guess. them a call if you want encouragement. Yeah, one eight hundred Barry and Eileen. I wish that was a real hotline. They would be awesome to I'm just sure pick up so. the phone. But they said, um, 
it was something along the lines of to those you love the most, you have to forgive the most. Mm -hmm. And I just think I've been working at Valor for two and a half years. At this point, it really is my family. Like, and most of our hires are 40 ish hours, like 35 hours a week. Most people are five days a week. So you're bumping shoulders, you're eating breakfast, you're closing, you're seeing each other early, early, Middle of afternoon, whatever. You're seeing each other. After and work stuff. Yeah, totally. And you're seeing like probably the best and sometimes just some of the lower parts of somebody. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, I think I've just had to learn that having to forgive someone is not a sign of us having a bad relationship. It's actually a sign of having a really amazing relationship. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good word right there. Yeah. Because... You know, kind of the beginning of the conversation, we're just talking about how fun, life giving, and energetic. Even you saying that that's what you saw out of me, Ross, and Riley. Yeah. Lo and behold, go behind the curtains. You know, we're we're fresh, freshly married. We're working a bunch of jobs. Yes. We're stretched out of our minds, Mm -hmm. and we're probably like arguing more than ever because we're trying to like build a company and we're disagreeing on how to do it. Yeah. But we're having to like communicate and Mm. forgive and like move on together. And that bond is growing deeper, even though it's not like yeah. roses the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, and that translates to now with you guys. Of yeah, like, I bet. You do so much life together that you do just share. You have to share feedback and you have to share like, um, I guess, just our humanity together. Mm-hmm. Because when you get a bunch of humans together, it's just going to get messy yeah because we're not perfect yeah we may be awesome and it's our ability to receive that feedback and grow from it that Mm -hmm. makes shows our awesomeness more than our performance right that's something that zion and i have been talking about recently being Mm -hmm. engaged we're doing a lot of deep diving into what we want in the future and communication style stuff like that and we were talking about i can't remember what i was talking about Um, uh, it's not your performance, (laughs) but it's your, yes. Oh, that was good. But it's your ability to grow. (laughs) and Yeah. Okay. It almost matters more how you react to your partner's feedback or to your friend, your coworker, whoever's giving you feedback. It almost matters more how you react than the actual thing that needed feedback in the first place. Oh yeah. Like, and I think I just didn't know that. It seems simple sure. now that I understand it deeper. But I'm like, oh, my gosh. The problem itself isn't really the problem. It's actually how we react to the problem together. It's, or am I going to be divisive? Yeah. yeah, totally. So then you decide. Then you see if your partner is choosing to partner with you or if your Oof. coworker is choosing to be your teammate yeah. or your family member wants to be your sister or brother. It's like, are they going to unite and we're going to look at the problem together and see – oh, we are not the problem. There is a problem before us and we get to fix it together. Mm -hmm. And we both play a role in that, Mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like, yeah, Zion and I have been growing a lot in that. It's really cool. It's cool when you have a problem, no matter who you are, whether it be, in this case, I'm referencing my fiance, but I feel that all the time with Valor. Like there's times when I really need to be honest with somebody or someone has had to be honest with me this is within coworkers dynamics. Mm-hmm. And then I have to choose how to react or that person has to choose how to react within seconds, you yeah. know. And and also I think a big thing is circling back and saying like hey, the way I reacted initially is actually not exactly how I wanted to react. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you say like something is mentioned in a moment and you're you're talking about one thing but then actually reflecting later and going back to it and keeping it an open conversation that's been huge at valor it's totally. like the language of hey we can keep talking about this also because we are busy we are slammed and the second you get off work you don't always have an hour to just talk about feedback but sure. you can keep growing with one another and choosing to show up to work the next day and grow with someone is more important than anything like that's the team that you want is not the perfect team inherently but it's the one that chooses to grow together yeah that's a good word dude it's uh you gotta fight to keep it awesome right like the the experience that our guests see is not a it's not by chance yeah it is like well well earned and well paved trails yeah it's intentional yeah um Let's just, I mean, to recap, it was like 
some dynamics for what makes an awesome team. I think you said appreciation. That stuck mm-hmm. out to me is just this idea of like appreciating the differences in your team helps your weaknesses and strengths collide. Mm-hmm. Having that culture of feedback um, to process and communicate how we mess up. Yeah. And it's more about how we grow from that versus the actual performance mm-hmm. because there's grace. Yeah. Right. And that if, <laughs> if you're in a if you're in a family, there's going to be grace yeah. for for the whoopsies. Um, what else did we say? I don't remember. We mentioned modeling things in our own life to make yes. it real in every aspect of our life. Yes. And not to the point of perfection, but just trying in all of the pockets of your life so that the most public can be honest. Yeah. And that's, and if that's the results that you want, you have to start there. Yeah. You don't start by trying to get what you want yeah. externally. And it's not easy and it's not immediate, but it's so worth it. Mm-hmm. Anyone who says they're like, they're thriving in their marriage and in their, whatever their most inner life is, whether you not be married. So for most of my life, I've, I've never been married. I almost said most of my life, LOL. I've just been living with like my friends or my family. Yeah. So even without having that relation, a married responsibility, I still am responsible for my presence in a home, you mm-hmm. know? And so taking responsibility of that and like, cultivating community and fun and family, but then also moments of honesty and growth and trust, you know, totally. all of that is so huge. And I have not mastered it in a lot of ways, but I've tried in a lot of ways. And I think that shows in my most outer life, which is like the 30 second interaction you get. Well, let's be honest at Valor. It's more like a 10 minute interaction you get when you're ordering your coffee or getting your coffee handed to you sure. or whatever. Yeah. It's crazy. People just think that we're like magical little fairies that are just like covered in glitter and happy all the time. Yeah. And hey, I love that. I want to be that. Keep believing it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you don't worry. We're working on the back end. Yeah. You don't have to see it. Yeah. You but don't, it ha- you don't really, have to be part of the feedback. That's true. But in your inner life to become that like magical fairy pixie dust, happy, crazy, magical land that Valor is... You have to put in the grunt work of intentional, like morning by morning, evening by evening. Who am I? Mm -hmm. And how are people experiencing my presence? You Mm -hmm. know, that's a good word, dude. Yeah, you got to start start with the the uh, what's it called? The core, I guess. Yeah. Mother Teresa, start with the the core family. Yeah. I'm learning that now. (laughs) Got to get home to my little guy. That's so exciting. Well, hey, thank you so much for being on this podcast. Yeah. You did awesome first oh my time. Gosh. I didn't even get to share the, the arm wrestling story. Well, share it, please. No. No, please. Come we'll, on. Have, we'll have to save it for another episode. Oh, you're going to leave everybody on the I may, I may have done it in a past one. Oh, okay. You know, I'm a broken record. Well, at least tell it. me after. All right, I'll tell you air. after. Maybe, <laughs> maybe in the culture couch. Nice. Huh? Yeah. Oh, maybe. All right. Hey, love you. Bye, guys. <laughs>